let's pick up where we left off in the last section with the container that we implemented to hold our projector controller. And we need to go inside and add a number of different functionalities. So on our guide, we can see that we've successfully implemented our calibration full dome virtual image. We've now also implemented our first version of these. So if I change their fill to green, so we now have both our projected mapped output and our blank texture. We, I'm not going to put the projector calibrator into green or the output to real projectors yet because we just, we only have a very, very basic version of them. This is why we introduced the idea of the virtual projector controller. It allows users to put the projector where they think it is and then make slight adjustments to both the field of view and the position of it based on what they're actually seeing projected. Before we can get started, we need to understand some fundamentals of A, how a projector works and B, how that applies to trigonometry and Sokotoa. When we talk about throw ratio, you'll normally see it written like this. One number, colon, then another number. The first number here represents the distance the projector is from the screen. The second number represents that the screen that is projecting will be one unit, in most cases a meter. But you need to check with the manufacturer whether specifying feet or meters. So the idea of when we have a projector that is, say, 1.5 colon to 1, it means for every meter and a half from the screen, you will gain an extra meter of projected width. And this is really important because using trigonometry and the concept of right angle triangles, we can build a very specific field of view calculator for our projectors. Even though in this case, they're not hitting a right angled surface, we can imagine if we build the pyramid that it projects, that at some point there is still a right angled surface. We just need to imagine it. The curved surface of our dome is just intersecting that rectangle in a strange way. And this is also one of the main reasons that we need our pixel mapper in the end, because it's not a direct rectangular surface we're projecting. So if we take our projected surface and divide it in two, we can really easily make a right angle triangle. And the reason we want to make a right angle triangle is because it's a lot easier to calculate angles and distances based on that. Thankfully, the projector manufacturer already gives us two of the sides. So we get what's called the adjacent and the opposite side length, the opposite always being one. We can then calculate our hypotenuse. And then finally, we can use all of these three sides to calculate the angles inside our triangle. Using Pythagorean concepts, we know that all the angles in a right angle triangle add up to 180 degrees. So we have 90 already, and we want to calculate this angle here. Using the adjacent and the hypotenuse, we will use cosine, thanks to Sokotoa, and that gives us the angle of our projector lens as it throws onto the screen. The caveat here being is that we're only calculating half of the angle, times it by two, and we have our projector's complete field of view. So now we need to build this system inside Touch Designer. So let's go inside our container and start building what we need. The first thing I'm going to do is we need a way for the user to specify what their throw distance is. So let's do something like a field and apply that field to a null just so we can visualize it. And we'll call this user fog. And then just so we can see this down the bottom right, I'm going to make it slightly bigger. We will make things prettier in the end, I promise you. But for now, we're just going to leave this as it is. Uh, and I'm actually going to move my panel viewer in one level so that we're just looking at this. I'm going to go inside my field and I'm going to change the text that is its background to be slightly nicer quality. So I'm going to go to, where is it? Font size. I'm just going to increase the font size slightly so that it fits. So now when the user types a number, uh, if we click it and type, so let's say our throw ratio is 0 0.84. You can see it fits nicely. And we'll probably, let's horizontally align it to the center just so it looks a bit neater as well. Okay, so we now have the option for the user to input their number. We're then gonna add a button 
that calculates it, so actually does the movement. So if we child this to our panel, make it the same height and width. So let's do a solid 75 by 250, so round numbers. So this is now 75 by 75. And let's move it to the end of the slider. And in here, I'm just going to say recalc. And again, I'm going to change this to be a polygon with auto fit. So now if we full screen, we can see that we, we in, input our number and then we can now push this button that will recalculate for us. I'm going to change this button to be a momentary. So it's a one press thing. So now we need to actually trigger some calculations. So there are three things we want to find out. I'm going to put these into a constant. I'm going to call this, let's do Pythag details. And then we're going to calculate when we work with Pythagoras and trigonometry, we have A, B and C, all lowercase that represent the sides of the triangle, the adjacent, the opposite, and then the hypotenuse. And then we have capital A, capital B, capital C that represent the three angles inside of the triangle. Now, if we consult this image from analyzemath.com, we can see that uh, A is where our projector is throwing from, C is our right angle, so that's 90 degrees, and B is our third angle that we know is going to be the sum of A and C take away 180. So right now we're going to focus on calculating A. C is always going to be a constant 90, and B is going to be something that we calculate separately. I'm also going to introduce a text. And this text is going to be our triangle angle calc. And I'm going to edit contents in textport. And now I'm just going to write the code that basically it takes whatever field of view the user has input and then calculates all the relevant angles and fills this table for us. So we know that we have operator pythag underscore details. And we're going to make this ref is equal to. So now we have the variable reference that is linking to this operator so we can fill its values easier. And let's do the output. So if we do A, B, C, A, B, C. And this is ref.par.value0. Value 1 value two, etc. until we have filled out all the values. So all I'm doing here is I'm programmatically referencing into this chop to tell it that we're going to set ref.par.value0 is the first channel value, value one is the second and so on. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five that does zero, one, two, three, four, five values. And we're going to set this equal to a bunch of different numbers that we calculate in our script. So we already discussed that we know that C is a right angle. So we're always going to make that equal to 90. We know that side A is going to be equal to, so if we go back to our drawing, we can see that side A is the opposite. So side A is opposite the projector angle, this is the one in the throw ratio. So we always know that that is going to equal one. Site B is, this is the adjacent, adjacent site. This is the first number in the throw ratio. So site B is going to be equal to whatever our user enters us through field of view. So I'm going to reference operator user fov zero zero because it's in just a one it's in a, a one cell table so it's zero zero as a reference so it goes and gets that. Site C is the interesting one so we're going to need to use some math functions to work out the correct details here. This is the hypotenuse of the triangle. We're going to use Pythagoras' theorem to calculate the, all the lengths here. So he states that 
c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So if we do math dot square root of side a times side a plus side b times side b, we have the answer that is the square root of the side. So it should be side A. So one times one is going to be one. Our adjacent side B times itself, and then the square root of that result. So if I print side C, and I'm just going to comment out the rest of this, uh, or just give these zero values for now, and then run this script, it tells us side is not defined in line eight. None type has no attribute par. Oh, it's capital P in Pythag. So there we go. We can see that we get a result of 1.3059862, etc., etc. So I'm going to clear that and rerun it. Okay, so we can now fill these out. So A is equal to side A, B is equal to side B, and C is equal to side C. Okay, so now that we've got all our sides, what we need to do is work out our angles. We would normally use the Zoka Toa Pythagoras rules. But because we already know all three lengths of all three sides, we, it doesn't necessarily matter which one we use. It can really be your preference. For the sake of this demo, or for the sake of this, We'll do all three just to show you how little the variation is between now that we have all the answers. So with the angle we're trying to calculate, we call this theta. We then use the opposite, the adjacent, or the hypotenuse to calculate the, the inverse cosine, sine, or tan of that angle. That will give us a result in radians that we then times by 180 to get it into half pi, and then we divide it by pi and that will, should give us the result in very specific degrees. And that's what we want because field of view is also in degrees. So let's have a look. So let's edit the script. And then all we're going to do is we're going to say our sine angle is equal to the opposite, which is side A. It's divided by the hypotenuse, which is side C. We're going to do cos A, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we're going to do side B divided by side C. And then we've got tan angle, which is opposite over adjacent, so we're going to do opposite, which is side A, divided by adjacent, which is side B. So these are now all floating numbers that represent the numbers we want to inverse. So if we do, let's say that theta sine, which is equal to math dot a sine, which means the, the inverse sine of our sine a angle, our sine a number. We do theta cos is equal to math dot a cos, cos a, and then we do theta tan is equal to math dot a tan, tan a. Okay, and now if I was to print these three, you can see that they all come out to nearly exactly, if not exactly, the same number. That is the degrees in radians. We need to convert them into degrees, uh, and I'm going to disregard this, so I'm just going to leave theta sine and just name it to theta. I'm also going to delete these two. Result in radians convert to degrees. So we then want to take our theta is equal to theta times 180 divided by math dot pi. And now if we print theta, we should have something that is around 90 degrees or so. Oh, no, we won't because pi is not, it's just one uppercase P, no uppercase. There we go, no uppercase. 
So there we go, we get 49.968. I said it should be close to 90, I just remembered that we need to times it by two still. So this seems about right to me. It's gonna be just off 100, given such a short throw projector. So now we can populate the rest of our table. Side A is our projector throw. So this is gonna be half of projector throw projector field of view, I should say. And this one is going to be equal to 180, or simply just 90, take away A. This one is going to be equal to theta. So now if I run my script, oh, A is not defined. Oh, take away theta. And there we go. And let's quickly add these up. So do a check, does 49.97 plus 40.03 plus 90 equal 180. And yes, it does. So now we know that our right angle triangle, because these add up to, to 180 has been correctly calculated. So the final thing we need to do is I'm gonna add another lane here and it says projector field of view. I'm gonna remove my capital P at the start there. And then I'm gonna add adjusted fov ref.pard.value 6 is equal to theta times 2. Because we have two triangles back to back, now we have the full result. So if I run the script, you can see that we have a field of view of 99.94. So the last thing I need to do is now make it so that when the user updates this value and pushes recalculate, that then this triggers this recalculating script to repopulate this table. So I'm simply just going to add a chop execute, enable off to on, and tell it to go operator, oh, let me unfull screen this, operator triangle underscore angle underscore calc dot run. And now if I push this, you can see it doesn't error, which is fine. But if I change my number, let's say we do one, recalculate, we can see that everything suddenly updates. So if we have a, a mid-range projector, we can see that our field of view goes down to the, the 80s. Uh, if we have a sort of a really old projector two, everything starts to update properly, which is very good. Okay. And that's a little visualizer so that users can see they're updating. I'm going to add my chop values to an operator viewer and parent them or child them to my field. I'm going to adjust the width slightly so it fits nicer. I think it's 325 for both of them. Let's make it about 250 tall and then bring it up a little bit. Minus me dot par dot height minus five just so there's a nice little gap between them. So now when I change the value, I can recalc and I can see all these values updating. 0.84. I use 0.84 because that's a really good short throw projector. That is what we commonly used when we were using domes. So I like to use that as my focusing point because I kind of know that's a projector that works in a dome setting.